This method of fishing in summer will outfish live bait. It'll outproduce leeches, night crawlers and spinners, crankbaits, you name it. Once you get the cadence and you know how to fish this bait, you will fish circles around most other presentations in the middle of summer on a day like this when most people are saying, it's the dog days of summer and the walleyes ain't biting. Unbelievable. You got to learn. Look, he's got another one. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. A sharp break right off of an extension. That's what I'm looking for. We'll get bit right there, right on that hard bottom transition. There's one, Al. Ooh, beautiful day about a week before the 4th of July, and we're catching walleyes. It's about 80 degrees. Al and I, on the way out here, we were talking about, you know, what's the real key to be, uh, you know, catching walleyes, and how does it differ from uh, any other species of fish? Well, not much, to tell you the truth, but one thing about walleyes, to stay on them, you have to be willing to move a lot. There you go. Just there a you nice go. fish. Here you go. Yeah, just pop Before him on the floor here. He's all yours, man. Up. I, I'll get that little wrangler out of there. Oh, <laughs> look at that. He's off. Perfect. Let's, there we go. Boy, is that guy a keeper or is he too big, Al? Ah, uh, he's over. He's over, unfortunate. I wanted to keep one. You know, one thing that's really important to find walleyes is food. For a good portion of the year, food is the driving factor that determines where walleyes are located in any given body of water. Got him. Got one? Yeah, perfect. It's an eater. It's an eater for you. My guess is that it's, it's, 16 and a quarter. I have my ruler all set up waiting. Look at that. The, I, I know you don't even have to measure that one. When I know, I'll keep, I'll keep him. <laughs> I know that's a perfect Man, eater. It was guy. almost under the boat. Oh boy, look at that guy. There he is. That guy is. My wife will be very, very happy. We got a slot limit on this, like 17 to uh, 26, I believe. And that means anything in between those numbers and you got to throw them back. Boy, just gads of bait spread out all over out here. You know, you look at these underwater structures out on this lake, and this actually has lots of different large underwater points. And the interesting thing is when you drive around all these different points, there's only specific areas where this bait is concentrated, and it's definitely worth your effort to actually do some amount of moving around, figuring out where the bait is, because the bait is not everywhere. See, as soon as I start coming a little bit shallower, I hit 28 feet and it's hard bottom. Is That's the silt, and then there's the hard bottom, soft bottom transition. The interesting thing is when you look at this hard to soft bottom transition, it goes around every underwater structure, every sunken island, so it's actually a, a lot of different ground that the fish use. But not only that, right now we happen to be fishing walleyes. Crappies sometimes are using this exact same type of location. And right now, muskies, I know muskies who fish for suspended muskies, are actually targeting this same zone of the lake. And, and while he's talking, I got an over. I got a pretty good one. I like the spot we're sitting on. Yeah, you can see whoa, that. Whoa, whoa. This, I'm giving you, oh, probably a 22 inch here, the way she feels. Oh yeah, nice one, nice fish, nice wow. fish. Get her, Holy get her. Mackerel. That's a right. good one. Get a good one. There we go. Oh, you Ooh, just, just came out. My it. rep just no, came you out. you see how much of a nice guy I am? Look at that. Give, give me my fish. fish. Yeah. Give me my fish. I got yeah. him. That's a nice one, huh? Look at that baby. <laughs> That's a good. That, th these are the better ones I was talking about. There's a whole lot of fish in this lake like this. Nice fish. Nice fish. It's one thing interesting because each one of these uh, features on your electronics can visually show you things differently. In this particular case, this is actually uh, side imagery, and you can see where the hard bottom, the hard bottom is this lighter colored on to the left of the boat, about up to you know, 40, 30 or 40 feet, and then it transitioned to the soft bottom mud, which is this darker band right here and to the left of the boat. But it really gives you a very good view. Look at that right there. You see, that's probably a walleye that's actually out in the soft mud right there. That's one thing you get in the softer bottom. There's another, there's some more out here, right here to the left, Al. Yeah. Right out this way, there's They're more, there's the walleyes actually out on the mud itself. I got him, good one. I got a, I got a spot locket again, James. It feels like another good one. 
Nice. You know, walleyes are where they are for one reason, one reason only, after they spawn. What is that reason? You're right, food. They're always looking for food. Food is the, the governing factor. This segment is brought to you by Northwest Ontario. There's no place like this. You know, these walleyes here are, are here simply because of the, the, the hatches that are happening down in the mud now, which are pulling the perch down there, and that's part of the whole food chain. You know, walleyes eat a lot of different, uh, 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 different types of bait throughout the sea season. They like perch in a lot of lakes. They like shiners, some bodies of water. It's shad in a, res a re reservoir. A lot of people forget the impact of, of an insect hatch. The insect hatch pulls other forage. The next stage in the, in, in, in the food chain is perch are there to eat the insect. And what is there to eat the perch? Right, the walleyes. Everything is about food, 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 food. One thing that's so vitally important every time you put your boat in the water, and Al spoke about it earlier, is preconceived ideas of where the fish are at. And many times you can use your electronics to really speed the fish finding process. No question about it, electronics speed up the fish finding process. State of the art, high definition Lake Master maps are priceless tools to refine the search process. Today, the best spots we have found are large points leading offshore and sunken islands that dump into the deep basin. These fish are on a hard to soft bottom transition in a depth of 27 to 30 feet of water. By selecting the depth range using their depth highlight feature, we can identify all the key areas to fish. All the key spots are literally highlighted on the map. Once we get to these areas, we rely on our sonar to find where the fish are. And there's another, there's some more out here, right here to the left, Al. Yeah. And one of the new buzzwords in sonar is chirp, or compressed high intensity radar pulse. Some of you may ask, how will it help me catch more fish? So here's the Twitter on chirp. Traditional sonar sends out a single sonar pulse to display an image. Chirp sends out a continuous range of sonar frequencies from low to high. In a nutshell, the amount of data a Chirp sonar fish finder interprets and displays is far more than a single frequency traditional sonar. Here are some of the key benefits we've seen using Chirp. Number one, the display provides more detail in a clear picture of the water column with better definition of schools of bait fish and game fish. Number two, Chirp has incredible target separation and reveals bottom-hugging fish, like we're fishing today over soft mud bottoms. Number three, Chirp shines for vertical fishing presentations like drop shotting. The bait, sinker, and fish are easy to see. So to answer the second part of the question, yes, Chirp can help you catch more fish. Fish after fish after fish after fish. Simply put, better information, or in other words, better sonar readouts, makes fish finding easier. You know, I'm holding like it right now, 31, 32 foot, and you see I just flipped underhand, just a, an underhand. This is that sharp break. I'm, those fish are coming right on that hard, soft bottom transition. And I mean, I'm not even making a long cast, I'm just kind of flipping it, working it back into the, the soft bottom. A number of presentations would work to catch walleyes that are holding on these hard to soft bottom transition areas. Classic techniques like trolling crankbaits and live bait rigging are effective tactics to catch these deep water walleyes. Today, we're using a far more aggressive pop jigging technique with jigging wraps or ripping wraps. Both of these lures enable you to comb a lot of deep water quickly and target fish that want to bite. The key to this tactic is speed, vibration and sound to trigger strikes. This is not a finesse fishing tactic, it's more of a high speed search and destroy strategy. That being said, you have to understand we're actively hunting fish on our electronics first. When we see walleyes, we drop our baits to the bottom and simply pop them back to the boat. No strikes, we simply keep moving looking for more fish. Throughout the course of the day, you can cover a tremendous amount of water. There's one. You got him? Yep. Ooh. Big gal? Mm. Looks like it. Boy, he That's is. an over. 
Darn. That's a bummer. Bummer. You know, one thing that's really cool about this uh, jigging wraps is actually is the cadence of the retrieve. And depending on the mood of the fish, and uh, it's interesting, it changes. And actually, how you actually fish this, ba fish this bait, Al fishes with a pretty aggressive snap. Uh, sometimes I fish it with a slower uh, pop and, you know, just pull it up and let it fall back to the bottom. But there is an art to the retrieve. There's quite a few uh, variables you could do with this bait, depending on if you're casting up like I am, holding it in deep water, throwing it to shallow water and fishing it back, or, or are you vertical fishing right underneath the boat? Yeah, you know, sometimes if I'm vertical, you really can snap it and you follow it down and you stop it for a second and a fish will hit it. When I'm casting from deep to shallow, I get more of a, a swing. I got, the strike zone expands more. You, you got another one, Jim's got another one. I'll expand on that. I got that one on the double pump. It's more of a, almost more of a bass fishing or a jigging retrieve. That's an and I'll, eater, I can I'll tell. I'll show it to you. Yes, it is. Oh. Yes, yes. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Look, he's got another one. <laughs> it's almost it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Let me do a spot lock here. Yeah, you know, on my Minn Kota Altera, yeah, you got that spot lock feature, and it is so key key. Every time you hook hook a fish, you lock yourself in, you work that area uh, over. Nice fish, boy. Put this guy here, I'm gonna have to net him myself. Uh, okay, come here, come here, buddy. There you go. We're gonna need the pliers for this guy here. Oh boy, look at that. I'm not kidding you, that guy didn't, he really got, got right with the program. Boy, I mean, he just lunched it. Oh, there we go. One hook goes out, one goes in. There we go, that's a better one. Come here, we gotta get her back in the water. You know, everybody has their own little uh, nuances to how they retrieve a given bait. And Al's got his sort of a vertical popping technique. A lot of times what I do, this is a, something that I actually do a lot in bass fishing, but I do it a lot with a jigging wrap. I'm gonna chunk the bait out probably 30 feet away from the boat, 20, 30 feet away from the boat, sinking down, letting it sink down. And now I'm gonna go reel it up, but I, what I do is give it a double pop like this, and then let the bait pendulum back down to the bottom. Double pump, let it pendulum back down to the bottom. You know, but you know, there's a lot of different ways to retrieve, and it's confidence in what works, and the biggest things at given points and times, a specific re retrieve, may be better than others because I know sometimes it's actually a slower retrieve, you know, a little bit more docile, not as much erratic behavior into it is more effective. So you do have to experiment with it. Oh, there, oh. You have them again? Some of those fish are way up there, I, I like that one. You got, yeah, I know, like that one. <laughs> eh. I'm not sure. It's, a, it's ah. an over, it's an over. There is always, like I was telling those guy guys that I fished with the other day, nice one. Anytime you've got a body of water that has a strong population of walleyes in it, they're gonna bite. I don't care if it's summer, spring, fall, or winter. Presentation is everything. And the one thing I learned about reaction baits in the last five years, like this jig and wrap or the rip and wrap, is how incredibly productive uh, a reaction bait can be. You know, we've been doing this for quite a few years now, and there's a, a really, you know, having the right equipment to fish uh, this bait to actually hook, feel, land, and actually fish these baits is pretty critical. This is actually a St. Croix medium action 6'8 Legend Elite. This rod has really the right uh, bend to actually fish this bait. One thing that's really critical, it has a relatively soft tip relatively, so you see that soft tip, then it loads up. So once you actually hook, the fish bites the bait, you load up on them and you got them. When you look at the line itself, one thing that's really, really critical in today's day and age in walleye fishing, so many different guys fish with fluorocarbon, they fish with braid. For jigging wraps, my suggestion, bar none, 
is fish with monofilament. You will ultimately land more fish with mono. We use a suffix, this is eight pound test, elite. And then one thing you'll notice, we have a, a barrel swivel about 15 to 18 inches above the bait and then the rod and reel. This is a Daiwa Fuego 2000 reel, very incredibly smooth drag. That's the ticket. When you think about walleyes and their feeding habits, they're grazers. Some of these structures, you know, you know it's not a couple fish to a spot like you could have a, in smallmouth. Uh, these fish could be hundreds on a structure. Yeah, you know, and they'll be there as long as the food is there. Yeah, you know, and they're active. You know, they're eating. It could be craws, it could be perch, it could be shiners, it could be insects. And then all of a sudden, when they get done with that pot of pot of forage and it's thinned down, they're grazing away to another, uh, ooh, another spot. Oh, oh, oh. That wasn't there, I like these grazers. Yeah. I like these grazers, Jim. This is a good grazer. <laughs> But that's how you think about a walleye. These fish are grazers. And a lot of them, there's a lot of fish in the school sometimes. Wow, that's, well, that's a, a nice one. one. That's, a, that's the biggest one we've seen today. Yeah, that's Come a here. pretty nice one. Can you get her in there? Oh, yeah. Wow. That's whoa, a, whoa, that could be the, quick, biggie, that's that's a nice the biggie, biggie of the day, yeah, I suspect. That's a nice one. It, yeah, it, it is. Oh, oh, come here, let me get a lock on it. The wrap came out if you can get yeah. that out of there. How's that one look, huh? That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Jim said it's the biggest one of the day. I'm not so sure of that but it's close. I mean, that's a goodie. Ah. And this is interesting. Look at that mouth, crystal clear. He ain't been e eating any insects, or she isn't. You know what she's doing? She's eating the perch that are eating the insects. That's what she's doing. Whew, I love it. When you look at this fish, think grazers. Schools and schools of walleyes like this, with a mouthful of chompers going like this, doing damage. To a school, school of shiners or or perch or whatever. And, and that's one thing about, ooh, he's got oh. one again. I mean, it's just fish after fish after fish. I know this bait is like the machine, the walleye machine. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. We both got good ones. Oh man. This, mine almost bit under the boat. Who's his biggest? Yeah. Let, me, let me see. I get, got mine got, got mine up yet. I'm not kidding you. This one here is a pretty big one. Oh, so is this one. Wow. Look at this. Oh, man. Can you get yours without a net? You well, if you can land here. Yeah, I, and I'm going to get mine. Look, there's a, this is a good school of fish here, Jim. Yeah, I know. Look at that. It just the <laughs> average not of, of the, like, I mean, these fish are just unbelievable. Uh, Oh, look at his. Just fish after fish after fish is just absolutely stunning. Look at that thing. We'll get her back in the water. Al's got wow. a duplicate. Wow. It's interesting. The whole thing, when it's all said and done, why does any fish do what it does after the spawn? Right. I mean, reinforce it. They are where they are for one reason and one reason only. Food, 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 food. Know what the forage does on your favorite body of water, the different kinds of forage. Pay attention to it. You gotta be on the structures where the, where, where the forage is at to consistently catch lots of walleyes. It's that simple. Hey, I wanna read you a, a, a lead article in a Bassmaster magazine, which is one of the leading uh, tournament organizations in the world today. The title of the article was Figures of Faith. Much in fishing requires faith. By definition, that means complete trust in someone or something. Most anglers put their trust in their experience, knowledge, or equipment, which is typically important for a successful day on the water. However, a second definition of this word is a strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. That said, there are scads of anglers who rely on their relationship with a higher power to guide them in the right direction, both personally and professionally. I like that. Then he goes on to say, Coach Bobby Knight of college basketball fame has a different outlook on divine intervention in sports. 
Coach Knight was the guest speaker at this year's Bassmaster Classic Night of Champions Banquet, honoring Aaron Martin's dominant season in 215. His quote, I watched a guy that hits a home run and he comes across the plate and he points skyward like thanking, like thanking for the help from the Almighty to hit a home run. Knight said, and as he does that, I say to myself, God screwed over the pitcher and I don't know how else you look at it. Knight went on to say that athletes, including anglers, should celebrate the faith in their abilities, God given if they so believe, which they have honed through hard work and dedication and focus. After reading this, I believe Coach Knight and I might not totally believe the same, <laughs> the, the same way, but I do agree with him in one thing. We all have God-given talents, and if we take those gifts and talents, something that we are better than most people at, and build on them, something good is going to happen to us. A lot of us, like a lot of the, the people he's talking about, give honor and praise to God whenever we're blessed. When something good happens to us, we just say, praise God, thank you, Jesus, something like that, that comes out of our mouth, that comes out of our heart. That's a belief structure. I don't believe there's anything wrong with that. For me, it's a real simple thing. Do your best, pray, and leave the rest to God. It sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? I've learned to stand on those principles. Do my best, pray, and leave the rest to God. That first part, do your best, is an important part. I take my God-given abilities and build on them. I pray over them, and I ask God to bless them. Many times he does. What does that mean when he doesn't? That means he's got another plan for me, something that is better than what I'm praying for, and it's proven in my life over and over and over again. Hey, something to think about this week. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, have a good fishing season. We'll see you on the water.